Our first meditation this morning is encouraging us to savor the beauty of the earth. And to that end, we'll read Psalm 33. Listen to the words of God in Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of, breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm through the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. On those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. The word of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is something that I want you, and this is going to be tricky. I, I assure you it will be very difficult. But I want you to notice something next spring. Next spring, just before the leaves come out, or right around when the leaves come out on maple trees, I want you to go and look carefully at the, you know, when you, you look at the maple trees before the leaves come out and they, they kind of look a little bit fuzzy, right? Go up to the maple tree and look closely at what's there. And you will see that these gorgeous, huge maple trees, they have flowers on them. I didn't know that until a few years ago. They have these gorgeous, beautiful little flowers, and I didn't know it because they're, they're green, <laughs> the same color as the leaves that are about to come out. But they're delicate, and they're beautiful, and they're awesome. Brothers and sisters, notice that. Notice the beauty of the world around us right now, the fall colors, the gorgeous you know, rain dripping down this morning. The beautiful children in our midst. The wonder and awe that we have in seeing each other. Each one here made in the image of God. Beautiful and wonderful. And each in our own way, though we are not perfect, each one holy holy because of God. Take some time today to savor the beauty of the earth. Each little spot
spark of beauty is a gift. The Heidelberg Catechism says that we can trust God to provide whatever we need for body and soul. Savor the beauty of the earth. It is a gift for our souls. Let us pray together. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the rain, the harvest, the flowers, the mountains, the birds, the leaves, for paychecks, clothing, shelter, and tasty food, Lord, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. As part of savoring our moments, the beauty of this earth and the wonder of each hour and the joy of human love, we are celebrating baptism this morning, which is absolutely fantastic. Before we get into the actual baptism, we want to remind ourselves of what baptism is all about. The Bible has a lot of pictures throughout of, of water and of death and rebirth. Water has a lot of imagery. It stands for, well, I mean, we all know this very, very much, especially these days. Water is something that symbolizes the cleansing that we need, right? We've been encouraged for the last, like, year and a half to be extra vigilant about washing our hands and being careful of the germs that we might spread around. And the scriptures, even though in the Old Testament they didn't particularly know about germs and so on, they knew about being clean. And they knew also full well that they themselves spiritually were not clean, none of them. And none of us either, all on our own without God, are clean either. Even the people of Israel, when they were living in the land of Egypt for 400 years, they were living among a people who worshipped all kinds of gods, gods that were idols. They were, they were fake. They were like fake news of the deity realm or whatever. And they worshipped these gods, and the people of Israel went along, and they worshipped these gods too because they didn't even really know their own God, Yahweh. Moses, when Moses gets called to bring the people out of Egypt, he has to ask God in the burning bush what he should call God to introduce him to the people of Israel. And so Moses does that, and through signs and miraculous wonders, eventually God brings the people of Israel out of Egypt, and he brings them to the, to the shore of the Red Sea, and they are panicking because the Egyptian army is hot on their heels. And God parts the water. And the parting of the waters of the Red Sea is symbolic of two things. In addition to being a very practical uh, way to get the people of Israel out of trouble, it is symbolic of the people of Israel dying to their old lives, being buried under the water and walking through the depths of the water and coming out the other side with new life. And it is symbolic of their cleansing, too. Their cleansing from all that clung to them from decades of slavery, hundreds of years of slavery and idolatry and ignorance. If we go further back in the story of the Bible, we, we hear about the flood and Noah 
and how before the flood, God looked and was grieved because the earth was full of so much wickedness. Wickedness of like the oppression of peoples and the abuse of peoples and slavery and oh, so many terrible things. But baptism, baptism is so much more. Because in the waters of baptism, we see that God himself, through his Holy Spirit, he washes us so that we are clean. Clean from all the sin that no amount of animal sacrifices could cleanse us from. Clean from all of the stuff that we can't wash off ourselves even now. Clean, and not only clean, but reborn as God's children. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, co-heirs, or heirs of God and co-heirs of Brian and Stephanie know, hopefully, you, well, Brian knows too, <laughs> right, Brian? Yeah, see, and, and your Stephanie knows too. Why did you do that to me? It's, I, I'm not as young as I once was, you know. I confuse easily. Sorry, Chris. Anyway, see, I'm broken and messed up too. I need forgiveness and grace as well. Chris and Stephanie and their kids, they know and or will know, they will grow in this reality that they're not perfect either. I mean, sure, they can remember their own names and not confuse them with their brother's names and stuff, but, right, you guys aren't perfect either. And, and God, yet, in spite of our imperfection, God has taken both of you and your children and said to you, I love you, and you are mine. And this is part of why we baptize children of believers, because we believe that God has embraced us embraced us into his covenant in Jesus Christ, this covenant of his blood which he gave on the cross for us, his death and resurrection. He has embraced us and welcomed us into his family, and we are his children, and our children then too are welcome into that family. Now the reality is, of course, that someday we hope and pray and trust that they will choose to follow in our faith as well. But in the meantime, you promise to raise them in the way that they should go and to do your very best to teach them how to live as Jesus' followers. Now, you're not going to be perfect at that. In fact, um, you know, this is one of the reasons that counselors exist in our world because parents traumatize their children. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, you're going to do that. Um, you're both wonderful and lovely parents, but, you know, it's going to happen, right? Um, but that being said, God's grace is there for you as well. God's grace is there for you as parents. So, we are going to pray, and then we are going to invite you to come forward and speak your vows together with us. Don't worry, it's easy. Let's pray first. Father in heaven, we pray that you will never destroy us in our sins as with the flood, but save us as you saved believing Noah and his family, and spare us as you spared the Israelites who walked safely through the sea. We pray that Christ, who went down into the Jordan and came up to receive the Spirit, who sank deep into death and was raised up Lord of life, will always keep us and our little ones in the grip of his hand. We pray, O Holy Father, that your spirit will separate us from sin, 
and openly mark us with a faith that can stand the light of day and endure the dark of night. Prepare us now, O Lord, to respond with glad hope to your promises so that we and all entrusted to our care may drink deeply from the well of living water. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll invite you guys to come forward. Come on up. How are you this morning? Good. Do you want me to put my mask on? I can't. You sure? <laughs> okay. Well, it's oh, over there. I'm just trying to be a good guy. Okay. Since you have presented this child, Aidy, hi, <laughs> for baptism, you are asked to answer the following questions before God and his people. First, do you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? And do you accept the promises of God and affirm the truth of the Christian faith, which is proclaimed in the Bible and confessed in this church of Christ? And second, do you believe that your children, though sinful by nature, are received by God in Christ as members of his covenant and therefore ought to be baptized? Third, do you promise in reliance on the Holy Spirit and with the help of the Christian community to do all in your power to instruct both of your children in uh, the Christian faith and to lead them by your example in the life of Christian discipleship. All right. Excellent. Brothers and sisters in Christ, would you please rise? Do you, the people of the Lord, promise to receive both of these children in love? Pray for them help instruct them in the faith, and encourage and sustain them in the fellowship of believers. We do. God helping us. Wonderful. Excellent. Can't forget my stuff. All right. You ready, buddy? Oh, you may be seated. Sorry. <laughs> Aiden, Shane, Paul, Treenstra, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow, that's cute. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yay. Now, yeah, I see, I told you. <laughs> Cute. All right, now, the reality is, Aiden, that you are not going to remember this day. I'm, I'm betting. I, I think it's a pretty safe bet. But we have, as always, uh, some things for you to help you remember. We have your baptism certificate, Aiden. So here you go. Keep it. Take care of it. <laughs> yes! Nice. Good boy. And uh, we also have, as, um, as we al always do here, um, we have what we call a uh, faith journey box. Because Aiden will not only, of course, I know you've heard this before, but Aiden will not only have um, this faith experience, but there will be many more throughout his life. And he will receive various mementos to commemorate those various various way markers on his life. I guess you don't need a mask either. He's Good. Honest, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So, um, so these faith journey boxes are designed to hold those mementos, so that as the child grows, uh, Aiden can look back on the journey that God has brought him through. 
And, and they may be things like, you know, graduation gifts that are given for Sunday school, or they may be a photo of a time at camp where they really learned about the love of God and it impacted them greatly, or it, it could be something really difficult, a, a, a memento or a remembrance of, of a funeral that they had to go to that was really hard for them. But nonetheless, God brought them on a journey. And so these beautiful boxes are given to the children who receive baptism here. And this is, yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, so this says Aiden up here, and it's got koala bears there. Um, and it says on it, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. From Psalm 118, verse 14. And so that is for Aiden to remember. So, praise God. We are so grateful for you and for your family. Yeah, let's praise the Lord together. Awesome. You may return to your seats if you like. You can stay up here, I guess. You can preach if you want. You want to preach? <laughs> oh, God is good. God is good. We need to savor moments like that, too. We should know all the more over these past number of months that we don't get these opportunities all that often. I mean, even in this church where I am certain I have done more baptisms than I ever have in my life before, we don't get to see them all the time. A and for us, over the past year and a half or more, we've had to witness these baptisms via videos on inter the internet or on our screens here. And goodness, something went wrong with uh, the video for the Newman baptism, so we didn't even get to see that at all. Ah, that stinks. We need to savor these moments. And so listen to the words of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will cause joy for all the people. Excuse me. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The word of the Lord. treasured these things and pondered them. How often do we dwell on the things that are not so great? One of the things we've been talking about lately is we've been talking about stress and anxiety and worry and all the struggles that that comes with. And as we talked about that, 
maybe it occurred to some of you or all of you, it certainly occurred to me that we often have this temptation to dwell on the stuff that is not so great. To ponder the things that we're worried about. To dwell on them over and over and over again. Instead of pondering the beautiful things. I had a time in our previous home in Oshawa where I was sitting out on our back patio and, and I happened to notice a spider just starting to make its web. And I sat there for the whole time it took for the spider to make its web. And I just contemplated that beauty and that wonder, the awesomeness of God's creatures and creation. And it was beautiful. And it was good. But I have to admit, there are an awful lot of times where I'm just worried about what people will think of me or what people will say of me or or how people will react to me or what will happen in my future or what will happen in my children's future or what will happen what happened last week that was so upsetting and I can't get rid of it and uh. but Mary knew and I'm sure she wasn't perfect at it But in this moment, she knew to treasure all those things and ponder them in her heart. A friend of mine who made the outline for this service said, and I agree with him, the most wise and humble and grateful people I know are the ones who go through life with a sense of wonder and expectation, seeing evidence of our Creator God in the world around us. Let us pray. For the wonder of each hour of the day and of the night, Christ our Lord, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. We thank you for the experiences you've given us over the past year. Some have brought us joy. Some have opened our eyes to a new dimension of life. Some have been tough, but through them we have experienced your care. We learned something. We've grown. Some of these moments have quietly nurtured us. They've been like daily bread to us. Thank you. Lord, for all these moments, for being present with us, speaking and providing each day in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll dismiss the children to go to Sunday school, uh, age three to grade, just whatever age. Sorry, who did you want, Wilma? Ah, good. Excellent. Wonderful. Children, you are welcome to go to Sunday school of any age. There are a couple more coming from up above. If you want to. And if your mother says yes, which I'm thinking she doesn't. Remember to savor your mother. She is a gift to you. Oh, don't roll your eyes at me, young man. I'll give you my pastor judgy eyes. You don't have to. Mothers are not given to you for you to like what they say all the time. I hate to break it to you, buddy. Wow, you could... 
you could have given me like a whole new sermon right there. <laughs> yeah, right for you. After church, I'll give you a sermon if you want. <laughs> hey, and you know what? This next section is perfect because it is savoring loved ones. Because huh? you love your mom. The joy of human love. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 15 to 23. This is Paul talking to the people of Ephesus, the Christians in Ephesus, whom he, he knows and he loves. He spent a good deal of time among them. And, and so he's writing them a letter after the time that he has spent with them. He is somewhere else in the Roman world. And he says these words. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> I've said this to you before, and I don't want to, you know, sound like a broken record, but it's important for us to remember in the same way that Paul gives thanks for the people of Ephesus, so too I give thanks for you. And you are called to give thanks for one another. And not only are we called to give thanks for one another, but we are also called to give thanks for all the people of this earth. Those who are Christ followers here and there and everywhere, for those who are Christ followers from the past, those who are Christ followers in the future. But not only that, of course, we are called to give thanks for every human being who ever is or was or will be. They are all gifts from God. People are gifts from God. Now, I don't always feel that way in some ways. We, we did some, um, I don't know, this was a couple of years ago. We were thinking of buying a T-shirt, uh, one for Kieran and one for me, too. Uh, we never did. It was kind of sad. We should. But it says, I'm not going outside today. It's too people -y out there. Because <laughs> sometimes I just need some time alone. Right? And that's true probably for everybody to some degree or another. But we are also a gift to one another. Even the person who is super angry because you got in a fender bender with them, or the person who really, really hates your perspective or your way of looking at things, or, or the person who just seems to hate you because of the job you have. You ever get that? Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's not the easiest thing in the world, is it? Right? They don't know you. They don't know Chris. They don't know Steph. Right? And yet they see a uniform, they see a police officer. And yet, somehow, that person there who's so angry is a gift. 
And do I always know how to figure that out and how to work that out? No. Or how to live that out? Not at all. But an especially great gift to us are those who love us. The Bible tells us that there are three great sort of virtues, character traits that, that are kind of above all other. Paul, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, talks about this, that there is faith, hope, and there's love. And the greatest of these is love. The Bible also tells us that we are created in God's image, something that I've mentioned a number of different times, and I am convinced that the primary way in which we are created in God's image is that we were created to love. We are created to love God in heaven, and we were created to love our fellow humanity. And we were created to love and care for this creation that God has given us. And so those relationships, no matter how flawed they may be or how awkward they may be, those are things to be cherished, to be savored. And so, brothers and sisters, I would invite us Take a few moments to pray. And during that prayer, take some moments to silently give thanks for the people who love you, for the people you love. Let us pray. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle, thought, and mild. Christ our Lord, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Give thanks for those whom you love and who love you. Lord, we thank you for each one mentioned, for your work in their lives and for the blessing they've been to us. Thank you for each one in this church. Help us to see in each other your provision and your love. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I'll invite you to stand together as we worship our God with now thank we all our God.